Hello, my name is Ashley Wilkinson, and I'm going to talk to you about the commodity chain of factory farm meat for my geography class at The Ohio State University. First, I'm going to talk to you about what factory farming is. Factory farms are owned by corporations and consist of very large buildings or factories that produce large numbers of livestock from birth to finished meat product according to Lutz. Many people compare factory farms to assembly lines because they try to produce animals at a fast rate. Factory farms are inside facilities. Normally, animals never see the daylight until they go off to slaughter. The main focus for factory farms is to produce animals for consumers as quickly as possible. Many of these animals are given hormones to speed up the rate of production. If an animal is sick, they are given large doses of antibiotics to help stop the spread of disease. Because of this, animals may become immune to the antibiotics given to them because they are so frequently distributed. So the effort to stop spreading disease and sickness is mainly defeated. I'm going to talk about the life of a dairy cow as an example because they are used for both milk and meat in a factory farm setting. According to MSPA, an agriculture protection group, it is common for the 9 million dairy cows in the U.S. to produce 100 pounds of milk per day, 10 times more than they would produce naturally. It is hard to believe that this is possible, but it is through modifying genetics. The mutation of genes makes it possible for a cow to calf each year. Since they calf each year, they keep lactating. After each birth, the mothers are artificially re-impregnated while they are still lactating from the last birth. The cow's gestation period is nine months like humans, and re-impregnating them allows them to lactate for seven months out of the nine-month gestation period. Now I'm going to talk about the diet of a dairy cow that lives on a factory farm. For a cow living on an old-fashioned farm setting, they would feed on grass and grain without chemicals or hormones. Generally, grass does not allow a cow to produce much milk, so in the factory farm, cows are fed a high-energy grain. According to MSPA, the unnaturally rich diet causes metabolic disorders, including ketosis, which can be fatal. The constant stress of constant milking and birthing adds great amount of stress to a factory farm cow, which makes their bodies become weak quickly. Factory farms don't like to keep weak animals, so once an animal's body slows down, they are sent to the slaughterhouse. The average cow living in a factory farm setting lives to be about four or five years old. Factory farms don't benefit the environment at all. Factory farms generate large amounts of waste, such as manure, that can contaminate rivers, groundwater, and streams by runoff pollution. This can cause health problems for aquatic life and for anything that may consume the water. People don't like the idea of factory farms because they consider it animal abuse. Some groups also consider animal slaughter abuse. Groups such as HSUS and PETA have fought against many factory farms to try to stop their business. Factory farms also cause problems for people who consume factory farm meat. Because of the large doses of hormones and antibiotics that the factory farms administer in their animals, the finished product may be harmful to humans. Since animals build up an immunity to antibiotics, diseases can spread quickly to the consumer by eating the meat of an infected animal. According to Dr. Michael Greger, author of The Bird Flu, previously unknown diseases have surfaced at a pace of unheard record annuals of medicine. More than 30 newly identified human pathogens in 30 years, most of them newly discovered zoonotic viruses. Zoonotic viruses are passed from animals to humans. 30 years ago, factory farms started to become more popular, which means that they may have been the reason that many new zoonotic viruses arose. Here's the commodity chain for a factory farm. I'm going to go through it step by step and go over what happens in each segment. First, I'm going to talk about the agrochemical producer, animal compounder, and logistics provider. Agrochemicals consist of chemical-based fertilizers. Agrochemical producers administer these fertilizers on crops and sell these crops to farmers for animal feed. A logistics worker handles the farm's distribution. Logistics workers load and unload merchandise from delivery vans, large trucks, airplanes, and ships. An animal compounder gives antibiotics to the farmer. 
Their job is to make the medicine for animals, even though it is abused by factory farm workers. The problem with agrochemicals is that many fertilizers are filled with chemicals that help kill insects and weeds. Although it may benefit a plant, many of the chemicals found in agrochemicals can negatively impact an animal. The segment labeled farmer is referring to the actual factory farm itself and its workers. This is where the animals are raised, fed, give hormones, medicines, and go through the numerous events I discussed earlier. The farm info management and financial service segments are pretty self-explanatory. The farm info management is where all of the decisions are made to manage the farm and financial services is where the financial decisions are made. From the factory farm, the animal goes to the feed manufacturer where the animal is checked and makes sure it is ready to go to slaughter. At the slaughterhouse, many people don't know what happens inside the doors, so I will explain. What happens is that the animals go in single file. At a certain point, they pass over a bar with their legs on both sides and the floor drops away. And now they are being carried on that bar, which is a conveyor belt. And they pass through a station where a man on a catwalk above holds an object that looks like a power nailing gun called a stunner. This tool essentially ejects a metal bolt right between the eyes, which can potentially kill the animal. At that point, chains will be attached to the animal's rear legs. The animal will be lifted up by the chains. The chains are attached to an overhead trolley, and this is where the animal will bleed out. Another person in another station will stick a long knife in and cut his aorta and bleed the animal. And then the animal will be completely dead. From there, the animal goes through a series of stations to clean him and remove his hide. One of the real problems from living in a factory farm is that the animals have spent most of their lives lying in manure and that they're entering a food plant. So many steps are taken to make sure that the manure doesn't infect the meat, but it can still happen very easily. From the slaughterhouse, the meat either goes to a food manufacturer or a food retailer. A food manufacturer packages food and sends it to a food service, and the food retailer sells the food directly. From here, it is sold to the customer. Here's a map showing where there are factory farms in the U.S. and how dense they are in an area. The red means that there are a lot of factory farms in the area, so you can see that there are many farms in the mid-U.S. and in California. This is a map showing where there are slaughterhouses throughout the country. The red dots represent federal-owned slaughterhouses and the yellow dots represent state slaughterhouses. I am now going to give you an example to where the meat will go using a map of the U.S. The red star represents where a factory farm may be in northern Iowa. The animal is fully grown. It will board a trailer and go to a slaughterhouse, perhaps in southern Iowa. The green star represents the slaughterhouse. After being slaughtered and manufactured, the meat can go anywhere in the country, such as Ohio, California, Idaho, or any other state for consumers to buy.